Hello there, welcome to Working Stress Free. In this video, I'm going to be exploring the subject of making the business case, the financial business case for addressing workplace stress. Uh, there is only so much money around, isn't there, that can be spent on coaching and training and making any procedural changes, working practice changes. So everything has to be justified. And I want to start by um, going back to what I talked about in the last video. There's going to be two perspectives, two ways of looking at things. We're going to be looking at things from an entrepreneurial management perspective and also from a coaching perspective. So let's start with the entrepreneurial management perspective. If you're in management or you own a business, you are the pilot of an aircraft. Think of it that way. OK, so you get into the cockpit. And around you, you have this whole array of dials and information that lets you know whether you're on track, whether you're off track, whether you have to make course directions. In business, these are profit and loss, balance sheets, cash flows, all the KPIs that we all use to let us know how's the business performing. But there's one dial that most entrepreneurs, business owners and managers don't have. And if they do, they've got tape over it so that they're not willing to look at it. And I call it the stressometer. The stressometer lets you know how are, how are the engines performing. You know, the engines are your people. Without your people, you don't have a business. The stressometer lets you know whether they, they need repairing, lets you know whether they need a rest, lets you know whether they're running out of fuel, lets you know whether they're under strain and something is going to break down and most people they don't even think of it that way they're not even looking at you know how are the engines of industry really performing so as much as people have all the other financial dials they're not really paying attention to how the engine performing and what's the cost to the performance of the aircraft to, to your business i want to share with you a quick story Three years ago, I was running a series of workshops where I'd invited uh, MDs, HR directors from some local businesses, from some companies I'd worked with to be part of a study group. Uh, they attended a one day training and then over a course of a month, they processed all the things they've learned and gave me feedback. And we got to a point during one of the trainings where I stopped and I asked the group, so guys, have you got any questions, comments, observations about anything we have covered so far? And somebody put their hand up and I handed them the microphone and this guy said, he said, well, you know, I don't run a business, but I'm a coach and I'm looking to get into the stress management business. How do I get more clients? Now, it wasn't really a question for the rest of the group. On the surface, it didn't seem like it was a question for the rest of the group. It was more to do with how to market and manage a business. But actually, it turned out to be a really good question for the rest of the group. So I turned to the group and I said, well, I said, I'm going to answer your question by asking the group a question. What would make you invest in this guy's stress management program, whatever it might be? And I put it out to the group and a few people said things like, well, you know, I need the experience of it. Um, I'd like to see the difference that it makes. And there was a lady sitting in the corner, sitting, rolling her eyes almost at some of the answers. So I turned to her, I said, so, madam, what would make you invest in fact you've given up a whole day of your time you're here for reasons i'm guessing that there is some stress in the workplace and you're looking for some solutions but what would make you invest in a stress management program which she was said immediately her answer straight away was i need to be sure of my return on investment bingo brilliant so i said great do you mind if we explore this how would you know you've got a return on investment First of all, there's a couple of things you need to know. First of all, you need to know what's the problem. You need to know what's the cost of the problem. You also need to know what's the cost of doing nothing about the problem. You need to know what are the solutions and what are the costs of the solutions. And it's the difference between the cost of the problem and the cost of the solutions. The bigger that is, the more likely you're going to be to implement something and the bigger your return investment is going to be. So I said to her, OK, let's start with, you know, what's the problem? What's the cost of the problem? So do you know the cost of stress in your business? What's the cost? And she went, I don't know. 
I said, so how can you work out the return on investment if you don't know what the cost of the problem is? And this is an issue that so many businesses face. They have no idea whatsoever what the real cost of stress is on their business. They have no idea of the impact it's going to have on the engines. So I'm going to explore this with you because I'm going to give you some tools so you can actually really calculate and get deep into the subject of what stress is actually costing your business. And this is so important because if you don't know what the problem is, probably nobody else in the business knows as well. So why are they going to get on board with anything, any solutions that you might come up with? So we're going to explore the four things that will help you to build up the business case so that you can get people on board with any solutions that you have. So we're going to briefly put on the coaching hat and the coaching uh, glasses and look at this from a coaching perspective. Imagine you are my client and we're working together because you've got some goals, some outcomes, some aims, things you want to work towards. And if I can see that you're doing something, which means you're probably not going to get there if you continue to do, let's say, a behavior, particularly behavior. And if I point out the behavior to you, one of two things can happen. Firstly, you'll either listen, you'll appreciate the feedback, you'll make the adjustment, and, and you'll test it to see if what I've said is true or not. You'll find out. Alternatively, you might be reluctant and resistant to hear the constructive feedback. Now, because we'll be coaching, I'd have already set up the framework so you'd be willing to listen to learn. Okay? So when people receive external information, they have the choice to either take it on board, process it, or resist it. Now, this is really important when it comes to putting the business case together, because if what you do is you just present a case to people and go, these are the facts, they can either take it on board or they can be resistant to it. And you'd be surprised how many people are resistant. And I'm going to talk about that in the next video. It's one of the things that stops so many great plans from actually being implemented or even some great plans being sabotaged. So the thing to do here is you work out the business case, but with the people, and I'm talking about your colleagues, maybe the financial director, other managing directors. Well, some people are stressed. You work with them so that they come to the conclusions that you're going to come to, which is to actually realize the full cost of stress to your business. Does that make sense? So it's not about telling them about it. It's about working with them to reveal it themselves. When people reveal things themselves, it's almost as if they take ownership of it. So that's a really important coaching perspective. You know? Don't tell them, but coach them and work with them to come to the same conclusions. And the conclusions are, this is the real cost of stress. And even more important than that, this is the real cost if we fail to take any action. So let's explore how to build the business case. Intuitively, the first place that people go to when calculating the real cost of stress to your workplace is the attendance records. You know, the who's been off sick one third of the people that are off sick, it's because it's stress related. Those are the statistics. Another statistic is that the absenteeism costs on average is £1,350 per employee. So for your company, nice, simple, easy statistic, number of employees times 1350 And that's not the truth. OK, it's just the start of the problem. What's the last thing that somebody does when they are stressed? They take a day off, which means they're still at work. How do you think they're performing if they're suffering, struggling, persevering, and they're still at work? Do you think that they're going to be performing at the best of their abilities? Probably not. There's an additional cost to businesses, which most companies aren't even aware of, and that's called presenteeism. It's the cost of somebody actually being at work and not doing a great job. Stress affects the mind in so many ways and affects people's performance. It, it affects people's creativity. Have you ever been stressed and suddenly your mind's gone blank? You've not been able to work out a solution to a problem? And it's only when your mind's clear that suddenly yeah, the idea just popped into your head? 
It affects people's decision-making strategy in terms of risk. People are more likely to take more risks. What about the presenteeism costs when somebody is, let's say, in customer service? They're kind of just not really with it, not on their game, and because they give poor customer service, you upset a customer and they go shopping elsewhere. Well, in business, I'm sure you know, one of the most important things is to acquire and hold on to a customer to make sure that the cost that you've invested in acquiring that customer, there's an extended lifetime value of that customer. Well, the person in customer service is just, you've just seen that fly out the window. They've just blown that one. And what about the salesman who, the cost of acquiring that lead and they turn up and they're just not really on the ball. You know, that somebody asked a question that if they'd have been less stressed, they'd have had the answer to. Presenteeism cost is calculated to be one to 10 times the cost of absenteeism. One to 10 times. Do the calculation. Get the legacy documents out, work out the absenteeism costs, and then select a figure. Go for five times and just see how the figures start to build up. There are additional costs. The person who's off sick, their desk is still there. The chair remains empty. The phone bills are still being paid for. The car might be sitting in the garage. There are overhead costs. Plus, they contribute to the profit of the business. Well, if they're not there, they're not generating any profit. So there's loss of profit and there are overhead costs. And there's another category. I call these additional costs, but these are huge. Imagine that you have an executive who literally gets to the point of going, I've had enough, I'm gone. You know, what does it cost you to replace a burnt out executive? What are the recruitment costs, the interviewing costs, the training costs? the costs of morale to the people that see a valued companion disappear off, the cost of them having to pick up the workload. And then there's an additional cost. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen, which are the litigation costs. If somebody can prove that you were negligent, you know, as business owners, we have a duty of care to provide a safe place of work for our people. If somebody can justify that, they were stressed to the point of having to leave work because you took no actions whatsoever. The average cost of litigation is 25 to 30,000 pounds. Can you see how when you look at the absenteeism, the presenteeism, costs to overheads and to profit, and those additional costs, you can start to build up a significant case. Now, you're not making the numbers up. You go with the reality, the facts. And better still, you do that with your colleagues so that you're not just presenting it to them so they can either argue with it or disagree with it or choose to accept it, but they come to the same conclusions as you. Can you see how valuable that would be? So remember, the reason for doing that exercise in building up the costs, getting that snapshot, is one, you can see that there's a problem. You see that there's a cost of a problem. Then you can look for the solutions, work out the cost of the solutions and the difference between the two. Well, there's motivation then, isn't there? You, know, you go, if we do nothing about it, this is going to continue. But if we do this, look at what we're going to save. OK, so I am also only talking here about the, the financial costs. And there is something else for you to explore, which is the real human costs. You know, I see it on a weekly basis when I'm coaching with people who are distraught, got to the end of their tether. There's a real human cost of not helping people to, you know, be able to turn up at work and enjoy their workplace. You know, we spend a third of our day, most people, you know, a third of it asleep, a third at home, a third in the workplace. There's a real human cost to not providing people with a working, stress-free environment. So... To help you to put the case together, I've put together a stress calculator. I'm sure you can do the calculations yourself, but if you want to follow the link, uh, there'll be a link somewhere around here. Uh, you can go to my website. You can pop in all the details yourself. Uh, I want to reassure you, we, we, I don't ask for any details, so none of the numbers you put in are kept. They're not saved. As soon as you log off, it's all cleared. But it just helps you to do a quick calculation uh, and really get a real sense of what inaction would cost you that's the thing to really think about you know what would happen if we did nothing about it 
And that's a very common experience. And I'm going to address that in the next video. So listen, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Again, if you get any comments, questions, observations, please email me. I will reply to them personally. And I wish you every success in creating a working, stress-free environment. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching.